get quite a lot of questions about how I use ultrasound and ultrasonic infusion in the kitchen. So that's what I'm gonna try and cover today with the caveat that this probably won't be a terribly long video because while I do use ultrasound within my work, I don't think that I'm an expert and I don't have a science background. So my understanding of it and how I'll describe it is, is all really from my experience as a cook. So really I'm gonna focus on how I work with ultrasonics and why I choose to. And then maybe if there's other techniques that you think I haven't covered or you'd suggest trying, you can drop them down in the comments. So just to set the scene, the use of ultrasonic equipment in the food and drinks world is mainly focused on two types of equipment. Ultrasonic homogenizers or sonicators, which look a little bit like stick blenders, are kind of one shaped, and ultrasonic baths, which look a bit like metal sous vide baths. The ultrasonic baths are much more common and accessible because of their price. So I'm mainly gonna focus on them, but I will touch a little bit on the ultrasonic homogenizers too. I use my ultrasonic bath regularly, but I don't actually have a homogenizer currently. I had one for a little bit about a decade ago when I was sent one to do some testing with as part of my job at the time as a consultant chef for a company that distributed them in the UK. And the homogenizers do open up a couple of other applications that you can't do with the ultrasonic bath. Things like making emulsions, but they are much, much more expensive and much bulkier. So I'll touch on them at the end, but we really will stay focused mainly on the use of the ultrasonic bath. I mainly use my ultrasonic bath for infusing flavors into liquids. And so that might be into alcohol prior to distilling it, or it might be to extract fresh flavors for a culinary application. And I'm usually doing this type of infusion because either it gives me a flavor profile that I prefer done this way, or because it allows me to make that infusion in much less time than it otherwise would do. And that can be an advantage in terms of workflow, but it also means that ingredients that might otherwise deteriorate over a longer infusion period can be infused in a much shorter amount of time. Just to give you a sense of those timescales, I generally find that about 30 minutes of cold ultrasonic infusion gives me a similar infusion level to somewhere between 24 and 48 hours of just cold infusing something without ultrasound at room temperature. I'll talk about some examples in a moment, but first, to understand the process this is working by, as well as how ultrasound can be used for making emulsions and flavor extraction, I'm gonna try my best to explain the process of cavitation, at least as much as I understand it. So ultrasonic equipment, both the baths and the homogenizers, work through this process of cavitation. And this is where high intensity sound waves are emitted either through the water in the bath or from the tip of the homogenizer. The sound waves create alternating high and low pressure cycles, and these cause tiny vacuum bubbles to form within the liquid, which then implode with incredible force, but on a minuscule scale. It's those forces and this process of cavitation that allows you to make rapid infusions using ultrasound and also to make really stable emulsions using a homogenizer. When I had the ultrasonic homogenizer, one of the things that I did quite a lot of work on was making these incredibly stable low fat emulsions with a similar fat content to milk, but using different types and flavors of fats and different liquids. And then I could use these emulsified milks that I created within cooking. That's something I wanna come back to and go into more depth with at some point. So if anyone wants to send me a homogenizer to do some tests with, absolutely go for it. Just another quick thing to mention before we look at some examples is the really hellish noise that this equipment makes. I won't add it to the video because you might be wearing headphones and it's just awful, but if you're thinking of getting any ultrasonic equipment, you should be aware of this horrible twisting metal high pitch shrieking sound that it makes when it's running. So you really need to think about where and when you might be using it. So for some examples, I think I'll start by talking about how I use ultrasonic infusion for some of my botanicals before they're vacuum distilled for the cold distilled gin that I make. I don't infuse all of my botanicals this way and I found that it works better for some things than others and I couldn't tell you exactly why and there didn't necessarily seem to be a particular pattern to that 
But whilst I was working on my gin, once I got quite close to having a finished method and recipe, I would try each infusion method a couple of different ways. Just cold infused or instantly distilled and then with ultrasonic infusion and taste those different infusions and distillations and then pick the one that I like the flavor of profile of most. Some of the things that I found the ultrasonic infusion worked best for were things like citrus zests, so the fresh lemon zest and fresh orange zest that I use, and then for spices like black pepper and tonka bean. I've also used it for things like fresh herbs when I wanted a really fast infusion, and then for things like spruce needle tips when I wanted to extract their fresh citrusy, apple-y pine flavour for the pine sorbet that I serve on the tasting menu. To make an infusion with my ingredients, generally I place them into a vacuum bag along with the liquid that I'm infusing into, and then I'll place this into the ultrasonic bath filled with cold water, and I'll typically run the ultrasound for about 30 minutes or so, depending on the ingredient and the result that I'm looking for. Over time, running the ultrasonic bath can begin to gradually heat up the bath itself. So that's something you might want to be aware of, although I find that typically for the periods of around 30 minutes that I'm generally using it for, that isn't long enough for it to have any real effect. But if you were doing a longer treatment and your product is temperature sensitive, then it's worth being aware of and you could always remove your product between cycles and chill it back down in the refrigerator. And for certain things like extracting flavour from wood, actually, these warming and cooling cycles can aid that infusion. Then if I'm planning to distill my finished infusion and I've infused into alcohol, I'll then run that through the Rotovap and do my low temperature distillation with that, either to make a botanical for my gin or to use in another way as a flavour on my menu. If you want to learn more about the Rotav app and how I work with that, I've done a few videos about how I use that, both for culinary work and drinks, so you can have a little look through a few of the things I've done with it. So something that I haven't really done with my ultrasonic bath, but I should mention because I know a lot of people experiment with it, is ultrasonic aging of products. The idea being to mimic the results of aging, for example, a spirit on wood, but in a much shorter period of time. So getting a result, for example, in a period of hours or days rather than months or years. I'm not really experienced with this. I did some tests, you know, over a decade ago, but that's about as far as I've gone with it. But as far as I understand it, no one is really claiming that the results of this are quite the same as or better than true aging. There's a lot of factors that go on during aging. It's not just a process of infusion. I can see though that it's an interesting thing to experiment with and that maybe it could be useful if, for example, you've made a small batch of a spirit and you wanted to decide what sort of wood to age it on. Perhaps then ultrasound could give you some clues as to what flavor profiles you would get over time from different woods and help you make that decision. So I know this won't have been the most in-depth video and it's really just skimmed over the use of infusion using ultrasonic baths but I hope that it at least gives you a sense of how I use this and whether it might be something that you want to investigate more. It's certainly something that really complements having other equipment like the Rotobat as well, but it's also got, you know, interesting uses in its own right. And if you're interested in things like vacuum distillation and gin, you might want to have a look at some of my other videos about those. And then I do quite a big variety of videos. So I've got a lot of things on things like wild foods and going through complete dishes off my tasting menu too. So until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.